Okay, so this is what the question says. A container of water has some cross-sectional area. A piston sits on top of the water. There's a spot of, I did it get also complicated all of a sudden. Um, let me label some of the quantities here. So we are given some big height H and some small height H, and we have some mass M. And I think it's going to matter that um, this has some area of 0 0.5 meters squared. Uh, and, oh, they are giving us cross-sectional area of the spot as well. So, okay, so this is some cross-sectional area. Um, okay, there is a spot open to the atmosphere and a stream of water exits the spot. Uh, ignore, hmm, we haven't been talking about friction for some time. And uh, this, ignore all friction and dissipative forces, combined with the fact that it's asking for the velocity of water, it's a hint at um, what expression is relevant for this question. Uh, and this is one of the few questions in this class where it'll ask you to use this relationship uh, because uh, that's what I say, you know, <laughs> you don't have to spend a lot of time studying it because, you know, normally this comes at the very end of the semester and people are busy with other stuff. The principle is Bernoulli's principle. And the two things to remember about Bernoulli's principle is, uh, principles, uh, Bernoulli's principle, is that it, um, it describes a fluid in motion or it, I guess it doesn't have to, but it ideally does, or, or it's useful in describing fluid in motion. So when you are looking at velocity of water, how fast should the water go out here? Um, as you describe water coming out of this larger tank, uh, it's the exact principle that will be, that's useful in describing motion like that is Bernoulli's principle, one. Two, it's a principle that comes from conservation of energy principle. So to the extent that the water is a viscous, viscous and there's a friction, and there's a friction, it won't exactly hold. That's why the question says ignore all friction. Because as long as we're ignoring friction, we can just uh, rely on Bernoulli's principle. But this is the sort of thing that you will have to worry about when you do experiment. Um, that's designed to test the Bernoulli's principle. You have to watch out for the fact that to the extent that viscosity of fluid is significant, the, there will be an error. Uh, Bernoulli's principle won't exactly hold. So the principle is this. It says that um, this combination of quantities uh, is uh, conserved throughout the fluid. That is pressure at some point plus uh, rho gh at some point. I guess rho would uh, typically be a constant, so I'm not going to subscript it. Plus one half rho v1 squared of uh, fluid velocity at that point. So yeah, and uh, each of these terms, uh, this corresponds to gravitational potential energy, this corresponds to kinetic energy, and I like to associate uh, pressure with the, the amount of work done. And uh, in the lecture, I attempt a kind of derivation. So using the fact principle that this is a constant quantity, what you can say is that this at one point is equal to the exact same combination at a different point. And you can see which two different points would be useful in this setup. So you have this point here, point just below the piston. You can figure out what pressure, um, height, and uh, fluid speed you have at this point. And this is the second snapshot. You can look at what pressure, height, and fluid velocity you have at this point. So uh, combining all these, this is the um, equation that you would start from. The pressure at this point, let me leave that as P1 because that's going to take a little bit of working out, plus the rho g height at that point, I can just use capital H, plus, and the fluid velocity is, uh, 
it's one that can be tricky. Uh, there are situations where you will actually have to write it down. Uh, when you do, you would just use uh, continuity equation as uh, your additional equation to kind of relate. For this question, I think looking at these numbers for the cross-sectional area, I can simplify it. Uh, it's a kind of a quick and dirty version of application of this because um, so I know that when the cross-sectional area is large, the fluid velocity is lower. When cross-sectional area is small, fluid velocity is larger. And I compare these two cross-sectional areas. They are different by a factor of a thousand. So the velocity at this point is going to be smaller by a factor of a thousand. So uh, I'm going to make the assumption, and I'll double check it later, that the velocity here is negligible. That I uh, the uh, that velocity here is uh, negligible. So I'm going to say my kinetic energy at that point is zero. And uh, and if uh, the system tells me my answer is wrong, I'll go back and correct to that. Uh, and as if I'm correcting it, this is what I would use to get a numerical quantitative value for that. That's not zero. Okay. So snapshot at two. Um, Pressure here, it says that it, uh, um, there's a spot open to the atmosphere. That's a hint, it's saying that, oh, that's just the atmospheric pressure. Um, plus rho g small h for this value of h. Um, plus, okay, this is where now we have non-zero fluid velocity. One half rho v spot squared. So, yeah. Um, I guess, uh, let's see here, uh, let, let me solve for, uh, let me algebraically solve for the, the spot uh, uh, fluid velocity. Because um, I think uh, all I need to do is I need to move these two terms over to the other side and then multiply through by two divided by rho. That'll get me V uh, spot squared by itself. So let me do that first. So V spot squared is equal to, let me just uh, express these differences, P1 minus P atmosphere plus uh, rho GH minus rho G small h. Uh, I think I can factor out rho G. So it's going to be rho G times big H minus small h. Okay, let me take the whole thing, multiply through by uh, 2 over rho. And yeah, that'll get me to here. I think uh, if necessary, pause this video, double check that I did algebra correctly. And to get rid of the square, I would just do square root here. Now, I'm not quite ready to plug in the numbers yet. I mean, I'm ready here. All these are all taken care of. Uh, where I'm not ready is here. I kind of left P1 as that schematic value. I didn't fully express it. So I need to finish expressing P1. So what the pressure at this point will be is it's atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to this object. I think that's another reason we needed this area. So P1 will be the atmospheric pressure because the atmosphere is also pressing down on this plus the pressure due to this thing, which will be the mass of the thing times G, that's the weight of the thing, divided by area, force per area. So, oh, so you see some cancellation. When I plug this in, P atmosphere will cancel out. And I can, this uh, thing on inside the parenthesis, I can just say that's mg over A. So, okay, I think I have all the numbers I need. So let me just plug it in and see what happens. Um, so I have, have square root of, um, let me write down mg over a, m, uh, let me just type in the numbers, 20 kilogram times 9.8 divided by area, 0 0.5 square meter, plus the density of water, 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter times 9.8 for g, times the difference between the two, uh, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.15 or 0 0.35 um, times 2 divided by, um, wait, I want to make sure my, yeah, I want to make sure all this is inside the parenthesis. 
so that as I multiply to and then divide by 1000 kilogram per cubic meter, it's applying to this entire thing before square root and then square root. Okay, 2.76 uh, uh, meter per second. And since I used a bit of an approximation, let me just to make sure that that approximation is valid. I mean, so the proper way you would double check that it's valid is by um, by doing something else other than checking the answer. But here I have the answer, so I'm just going to check the answer. Um, okay, so it the part B asks if the opening of the spot is located oh i see so it uh, when i was reading it silently to myself i misread it thinking oh so we are going to move the spot no that's not what it means it's just saying that it's on some kind of table for example so there's an additional distance of um, 2.05 meters to the ground uh, from the top of the table so from here all the way to the ground is 2.2 meters. How far from the spout does the water hit the floor? Oh, that's a it's a projectile motion question. So you have some height that you are falling from. You have some horizontal initial velocity, and it's going to hit the water at some distance d. It's asking to calculate that. Um, so let me go through this quickly. We've done kinematics at the very beginning of the semester. And I guess this question is a reminder for you not to forget what you learned at the beginning of the semester because physics is cumulative. The things we teach you at the beginning, you will use it at the end of this class and in your future classes. So it's something that you need to know. So, um, so with the projectile motion, I use a vertical motion to figure out my uh, duration of time. Um, so what I would say is y is equal to initial height of h, uh, zero initial velocity, minus one half g t squared. Okay, I can solve for t here. y at the final time when it hits the ground is zero. Oh, because I'm setting y equal to zero here. And once I have the time, then I can get my x position by saying my... Um, my final x position is initial x position zero plus uh, v naught times time and no acceleration in the horizontal direction. That's the definition of projectile motion. So I can solve for t here, plug it in here, that will give me the x. So solving for t here, I'm just gonna do the algebra quickly in my head. It's gonna give me t is equal to two h over g, square root it plug that in here, then I end up with um, x uh, final is equal to v naught, that, uh, so 2.76 meters times the time, square root of 2h over g. And I'm given all these numbers. I'm given h, I'm no g, so let me plug in those numbers. I have 2 point, uh, let me just get the number from before, times square root of uh, 2 times h, 2.2 meters, divided by 9.8. So uh, 1.85 meters. Let me plug it in, make sure I got it right. And I guess uh, maybe one thing to explain is how um, we didn't take into account that it's uh, fluid, um, that it's not a solid object. It's because we don't have to. If you imagine taking a little fluid uh, volume element, a little tiny piece of fluid that says that's getting pushed out, it's not as though there are special laws of mechanics that apply to fluid that didn't apply before. The, uh, that's really the emphasis of our approach, which is that we fluids obey the same mechanical principles that solid objects do. The only difference is that fluids don't have internal forces that maintain their shape. So you have to, that's why you have to deal with the things like a density so that you have a way to deal with the small infinitesimal elements of the fluid. In terms of figuring out where this infinitesimal fluid element hits the ground, well, um, their exact mass doesn't matter. So. So you can just treat it as if, uh, uh, treat it ignoring the fact that it's liquid, not solid. Um, again, ignoring all the 
friction and dissipated forces like air resistance.